Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be testing LC filters and it's about time we've tested LC filters. Now a previous just a heads up on what happened to me in the past. One time I was playing with them and I find out that they make things worse. Now not the things that are taking power from the LC filter. Everything before the LC filter is just for some reason getting a lot worse. So that's been imprinted in my mind for quite a while now and now we have the perfect platform to test. So Let's get testing. Alright guys, so the testing result was actually pretty strange. Now, let's first talk about the LC filter. On the oscilloscope, everything after the LC filter was basically getting like 5 low ESR capacitors. But, there was still noise. Isn't that strange? So, what happened is that the coil effect, well, let's talk about LC filters. An LC filter is basically a coil or an inductor, whatever you want to call it. It what, what that does is basically resist sudden changes in current and obviously voltage spikes and all that kind of stuff. And it also has a capacitor on board to soak up some of the voltage. So it also filters out low and high frequency noise. But I truly believe after this test that low LC filters is not for a noisy quad at all. And let me explain why. Even though the testing result was absolutely clean, there was still noise in the system. Now you might say, okay, well, how is there noise in the system? Well, everything before the LC filter um, is much more vulnerable than it was without it. So you're better off without an LC filter than with an LC filter at the current moment of time of testing this LC filter that I have. And I think it's due to the coil, the resisting characteristics of the LC filter, which kind of, in a way, it, you can't really see the amplification into the noise on the overall system, but it feels like the other components are just getting hammered. And what I've done is, I've obviously, I've connected the LC filter to the VTX, and I ran the testing, and it was there was still noise. So I was like, okay, well, I think, I think the only thing logical place to be is that the 5 volt regulator is getting hammered by the noise it's becoming more vulnerable with the lc filter thus the noise coming from the osd and the camera because the osd started to flicker and for a matic board an osd to flicker you know there's a big problem in your quadcopter now without any type of filtration when we just had a default setup with no capacitors no nothing I have never seen the Matic board OSD flicker, which is a very big concern. Now, for, if, for example, right now if I go boot it up again and I find my OSD is dead, then I'm going to blame it on the LC filter. It's, it's, um, it's very strange. And this is going to be, there will be a second part to this where we really dig down into this and see what's really going on. So... After seeing that the 5 volt regulator was, or the camera still had noise after the LC filter was connected, I said, you know what, I'm going to give power to the camera also from the LC filter and see if that fixes it. While well, both of the VTX and the camera are still connected to the OSD. So, come to my surprise, there's still noise. And the OSD is still flickering. I said, okay, well, then maybe, I, let me try to put a low ESI capacitor on the 5 volt rail. Hopefully it will clean out the noise in the 5 volt regulator. Didn't do nothing. The OSD was still flickering. So that was that was a very big surprise for me. I was really like, I just didn't know what to think at the current moment of time. I said, okay, you know what? 
What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna connect the camera and the VTX direct without OSD and see if the noise will go away. Since now everything is connected through the LC filter from the VTX and the camera. And the noise was still there. Now the noise, I boiled it down to one thing left, but I still need to test a little bit more. What I think is going on, even though the LC filter is really cleaning everything out on its other side, but ruining everything else before it, um, the voltage fluctuation with the voltage regulator that's in the camera, obviously what I mean is by voltage drops, is really affecting the camera. I think the camera is more susceptible for, for voltage fluctuations than a VTX. It's uh, more vulnerable, it's more sensitive, that's the word. And uh, the way to prove this, if it's true or not, is I have a couple methods which will be in part two. Obviously I'm gonna replace the cameras and check other cameras. I have plenty of cameras here, I could test many other cameras. If the issue's still there, next step is to remove the camera, get my signal generator, which I could simulate noise in a way and control the voltage as I please and as I, as I program it. And I'll do some kind of voltage fluctuation, not, not like a super hard high frequency noise, just something of the nature of voltage sags, you know, when the motor is going full throttle real quick and comes back down. These kind of simulations, and if we do see noise in the FPV camera, then the cameras are more susceptible. But it's not the camera's fault here. The problem is we need to start avoiding LC filters if this is true, because I still, I would like to do another test later on and seeing if that affects the gyro as well. Because there's also something that happened to me in the past. There was these Omnibus F4 flight controllers and they claimed to have an LC filter on board. Now I remember when I put anything somewhat of noisy in it, I would constantly, my OSD would basically disappear. So that started to bring back memories and of specific things that I used to do. And I, to be honest, I hate that Omnibus F4 uh, flight controller with the LC filter. It just makes things worse. Now, <clears throat> this is my current theory. And currently I have some of the data to prove this, but obviously I will need to dig in a little bit further to really conclude this. But at the current moment of time, in my personal opinion, I would truly avoid LC filters, and I would currently just stick to low ESR capacitors, and I have been getting bombarded with emails and comments about testing diodes, and that diodes will be better. But you need to take something into consideration with the diode. There's something called a dropout voltage, which means it depends on the diode. You could have a one volt dropout voltage in some cases, which means oh, your, your, your battery is at 16.8 volts and you add these diodes by your ESCs. Now your ESCs on a full battery are getting 15.8 volts, which is you just lost one volt. So one volt that really counts in your KV. So you're losing efficiency, power and uh, speed. So it's really not not useful when you could just put a low ESR capacitor there even put a small one it's better than a diode in my opinion at the current moment of time however I did pick up diodes and I'm waiting for them to arrive so we can go ahead and test this and at the current moment of time my conclusion is LC filters are a big no-no but this is only a theory but for my personal preference I will never use an LC filter on any quad I'll only use them for testing purposes so for this video, I think it's going to conclude it. Um, there's really nothing else to say. And I just basically showed you everything throughout the video that I've gotten. And it's just, it's a very strange, it was really just, um, it lost me. But uh, it needs a little bit more digging into. And that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please consider joining my Patreon. Help support this channel. Help fund this mission for testing every single thing we could possibly test. And you could also use the links down below. Those greatly support the channel. And I hope you guys have a great day. And I'll see you next time. See you guys. Take care.